All right, well, we are on the final leg of this chapter. There's just a little bit left. So this, so this, this last segment will go fairly quickly. We're talking about informatics, informatics systems and what it actually means and how informatics is changing healthcare. Uh, it, it truly is. When I started nursing um, back in the Stone Ages, you know, we had, uh, you know, well, I'm not going to go that far back, but you know, everything was on paper. Orders were on papers. Orders were transcribed on papers. You had to read the chart and flipping through, and and it worked. It worked for a long time, but it was awkward. How many of you have seen doctors' handwriting? It can be challenging at best to read it. So informatics is a, is especially of nursing, or especially it's a science of its own, but it's it in, integrates nursing science, computer science, informational services, kind of lumps it all together, is to communicate information, knowledge, and and best practices. It it works really good to keep everybody on the same page, especially when you can integrate. Nursing, medicine, radiography, imaging, you know, therapies, when you can integrate all the different types of treatments for a patient in one system, there is less room for error, fewer gaps in the system. Clinical information system is a collection of various information technologies, it's applications that provide patient care across locations. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, Aurora with Epic. Before Epic, they had Cerner, but now with Epic, it's the same thing. When you enter the Aurora system, if you go to a different city with an Aurora hospital, they can access all your records, which is really good for continuity of patient care. These clinical information systems also use standardized nomenclature or standardized names classifications, taxonomies, it helps coding, um, it helps billing and payments, and it coordinates care so that every doctor knows what's, what's going on. It's all part of the electronic health record, which um, is a comp complete record of clinical patient encounters, as well as other activities directly or indirectly interfacing with the patient. So again, quality management, um, outcome reporting, it all goes together. And we are uh, rapidly evolving into the point where everything needs to be, pardon me, I had a little spider on, the, on my computer, so I had to kill it. Um, we are rapidly getting to the point where everything will be electronic. That can be really good really bad, depending upon how it's being monitored, maintained, and, and security. Um, I, I think overall it's going to be good. Will it be perfect? Nothing's perfect. There will be challenges. There will be growing pains. But ultimately everything will get better. For example, at Holy Family, the doctors input all of their orders on the computer themselves. So that's really nice. No more trying to interpret what they mean. Um, every doctor must put the, the correct abbreviations. Uh, so there's very little room, for, less room for error. There's always room for error. Uh, there's other technologies that are being implemented. You know, point of care information, you know, handheld devices that have books that you might use in your clinical. Uh, point of care documentation. Some facilities use small handheld devices to document their assessments right into the computer from a handheld device. Computerized physician order entry is, is getting more and more common. Uh, barcode medication administration. Holy Family barcodes and has a scanner for all the medication as one more check on the rights, uh, which is really good, but it's also, if you haven't worked on it before, it's something that people tend to forget. So any of you that have me for advanced clinical man advanced clinical practice at Holy Family will learn how to use barcoders, both for the medication and for the wristband, to make sure that we have the right patient and the right medication. Nurses need to be computer literate. There's no way around it anymore. You need to have basic computer skills. You have to understand how to navigate around a computer 
how to use basic programs, how to use a mouse, input devices, how to read a computer. You need to know how to find and analyze information. Don't use a workaround if you can't figure out the computer because it's only going to leave you behind. Um, if technology is holding you back, you need, to, you need to get the training necessary. This applies to students as well as nurses. It applies to everybody. The world is becoming computerized and if you can't if you can't learn to deal with computers, you're going to be ha you're going to you're going to ha ultimately have problems. You know, our goal is to always do the right thing all the time as inexpensively as possible. That's bottom line. We want to we want to provide the best possible care using our resources as efficiently as possible. We don't have unlimited resources. Un resources being people, things, and money, and time. We have finite amounts of everything. So we need to be as efficient and as effective as possible. Effective and efficient are two different things. Effective is outcomes. Efficient is how we get there. So we'll be talking about that in Learning Plan, I believe, 9. Evidence-based uh, practice and safety issues. You can always go to the AHRQ uh, to find evidence-based practice in nursing and healthcare. It's excellent resource for more information, um, and will be a good place to for for resourcing your philosophy paper. That brings us the, to the end of the evidence-based practice lecture. It's been a long one. It's been complicated at times. It's a complicated issue. It's an important issue. And if you have any questions, please email me or join the chat on Friday morning, 9 to 11. Um, just pop in, shoot me your question. I'll answer it. We can chat back and forth that way. Um, if anybody else is in there together at the same time, we can get a, get a dialogue going with multiple people. Um, I think it worked very well last week, I, and I invite you all to join me if possible, obviously. I know that it's possible you may be working during those hours, and I thought about that, but there's really no way of finding the perfect time for everybody, because we all have lives. There's 16 of you plus me. Uh, trying to find a time when we're all going to be together won't happen. So if you can make it great, if you can't, I fully understand. Um, as I did last week, I will give a summary of what was talked about. Uh, and so you can always shoot, shoot me your questions via email. I'm going to give one, one more. There will be a, a DQ explanation video coming up very shortly. Other than that, I don't know. Keep, keep doing as good as you're doing, and life is going to get awesome.